Hello, and welcome to this complete guide to PVM perks for beginners. Ancient Invention is unlocked by using an Ancient Gizmos blueprint. At current prices, this can be purchased on the Grand Exchange for about 4 million coins. Ancient Gizmo shells can hold up to 9 components, up from the 5 you would get with a standard Gizmo shell. Upgrading from standard perks to budget Ancient Invention perks is a more significant DPS increase than upgrading to a tier 99 prayer, and it is significantly less expensive. Upgrading your perks can be pretty daunting, and the invention skill itself is quite confusing at times. And in this video, I'm going to break down every single perk you would need to know about, I'm going to look at all of the different perk combos, prices, and I'm going to try and give you all of the information you would need to make a good informed decision on which perks you're going to want to put on your gear. Before we augment our gear, let's talk about augmenting our browsing experience. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. When you browse the internet, your ISP can legally sell your data to ad companies, and private information like your IP address can be stolen extremely easily. Just this week, a series of IP grabber bots attacked Twitch, and were able to gain access to your IP address the moment you clicked on their profile. In the wrong hands, your IP address has information about your location and also opens you up to a potential DDoS attack, which is what prevented me from streaming an hour before the Arch Glacier release just last month. I knew my IP address had been accessed, but there was nothing immediate I could do about it. And that's where ExpressVPN comes in. Not only do they prevent the sale of your personal data to advertising companies by encrypting everything you do on the internet and routing it through their servers, but they also allow you to swap your location and with it your IP address to any of 94 different countries. This allows you to browse securely and keeps much of your information protected while protecting you from any kind of DDoS attacks. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash the RS guy or by clicking the link in the description down below. We're going to start things off by looking at the basics. We're going to talk about what you'd want to put on a standard main hand weapon, a standard offhand weapon, and a standard two handed weapon. And then after that, we're going to go through your body armor and your leg armor in a standard PVM scenario. After that, we'll get a little fancy and we'll talk about switch perks as well as shield perks and niche perks as well. But for starters, let's get right into weapon perks. Main hand and offhand weapons each have one perk slot, and two handed weapons have two perk slots. It's worth noting that perks of the same kind do not stack at all, so if you put the precise 4 perk on your main hand and the precise 5 perk on your offhand, it would just count as precise 5. For each perk, I've suggested an advanced best in slot combination as well as a budget setup. The budget setup is extremely good for the price and is likely to be the starting point for most players. I'm also displaying the chance of receiving each perk as well as the total cost assuming you have average luck. And all of these are assuming that you're level 137 invention, which is level 120 with an extreme invention potion, unless indicated. If you're lower level than this, I've linked a perk calculator in the description of the video that you can use to check your perk chances at every level. The last thing I'm going to say before we get into it is that all prices are as of the date of publishing and are subject to change. If the prices are daunting, components can also be acquired via the scavenging perk, which requires time instead of GP. Let's talk about Aftershock. Here's what it does. After dealing 50,000 damage, create an explosion centered on your current target, dealing up to 40% weapon damage per rank to nearby enemies. If Aftershock is not equipped at any point, your damage counter will be reset to zero, which means that if you are planning on using switches in your PVMing, you'll want to have some rank of Aftershock on all of those switches as well. In a budget setup, Aftershock is extremely expensive and it's not worth it at all. In an advanced setup, the Aftershock perk is combined with other perks in the same gizmo. Combinations are going to be shown when I talk about those other perks. Using Aftershock will equate to roughly 2.5% more damage output than the non-Aftershock weapon setups, but it can cost about 750 million coins per combat style at current prices, so you really need to weigh in the pros and cons and determine if it's worth it for you. The second perk we're going to talk about is Equilibrium. Equilibrium increases your minimum hit by 3% per rank and decreases your maximum hit by 1% per rank. Equilibrium should go on your primary offhand and two-handed weapons, and it can also go on a rebounder and a scythe. In advanced setups, you're going to pair the Equilibrium perk with Aftershock in going for Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2. You get this with 6 Illajunkin components as well as 3 Time Worn components, and every single Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2 you go for should cost you about 220 million coins at current prices. On a budget setup, you're just going to use 8 Time Worn components and go for Equilibrium 4. Going for a budget Equilibrium 4 by itself should run you about 900,000 coins, and you can purchase Time Worn components on the Grand Exchange. Now let's talk about Precise. Precise increases your minimum damage by 1.5% per rank of your maximum damage. Precise should go on your primary main hand as well as your two-handed weapons, and it's an extremely strong perk. If you're on a budget, you're going to go with Precise 6, which you can get with 9 Historic Components. Historic Components can be purchased on the Grand Exchange, so this one should not be too expensive. In an advanced setup for your main hand, you're going to combine Precise 6 with Aftershock 1, 
This doesn't sound completely intuitive because you've already got Aftershock on your offhand, but the reason you want Aftershock 1 on your main hand as well is not actually for damage, because it's not going to stack with the Aftershock 4 on your offhand. Instead, it does two things. The first thing it does is it allows you to swap to a shield without losing your Aftershock stacks. The second thing it does is it gives you access to the precise 6 perk while you're using a shield or any other switch offhand that we're going to talk about a little later on in the video. This is very important as precise 6 is a larger DPS increase than Equilibrium, and this is the reason why you wouldn't just put Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2 on your main hand. You can get precise 6 Aftershock 1 with 7 Armadal components as well as 2 Illajunkin components. On a two-handed weapon, you've already got Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2, so you can instead go for precise 6 Ruthless 1 on your 2H. We're going to talk about Ruthless 1 a little later on in the video, but it's very much a niche perk, and this Ruthless 1 is not essential, although it is technically best in slot, which is why it's listed here. Now that we've covered the three basic fundamental weapon perks, let's talk about some basic armor perks. An augmented torso and legs each have two armor perk slots, and shields have one singular armor perk slot. When perking your armor, there are generally four perks you want, with variations that will also be covered later in the video. These perks are Enhanced Devoted, Biting, Crackling, and Impatient. And we're going to start things off by talking about the most simple of these four perks, Enhanced Devoted. The Enhanced Devoted perk gives you a 4.5% chance per rank on being hit that your protection prayers will work at 100% effectiveness for 3 seconds. This equates to a 33% total damage reduction at most boss fights, although it does depend on how fast whatever you're fighting is attacking you. Enhanced Devoted cannot be combined with any other perks in the same gizmo shell, and for that reason, there's only one combo here, it's Enhanced Devoted 4, with 8 faceted components. This should run you about 250,000 coins, and is an exceptionally strong perk. The next three perks we're going to be talking about can each be combined with a secondary perk. There are several secondary perks that each have different uses, and choosing which ones you want are up to personal choice. It's going to depend largely on which bosses and activities you enjoy doing. The first one we're going to talk about is the mobile perk, that halves the cooldown of all of your mobility abilities, but in return, they generate no adrenaline. The mobile perk is generally good on ranged and magic gear, but you don't really want it on melee gear as it will make greater barge give you no adrenaline. Next up, we're going to talk about the Dragon Slayer and Undead Slayer perks. They give you 7% increased damage to dragons and undead creatures respectively. The Dragon Slayer perk is extremely good if you do the second Elite Dungeon, and the Undead Slayer perk is very good if you do Rise of the Six, as well as the third Elite Dungeon for Terrakit. The last two we're going to talk about are Crystal Shield 1, which gives you an emergency pool of life points, and Venom Blood, which makes you immune to poison damage. Now that we've talked about what some of these combination perks are and what they do, we're now going to turn our attention back to the final three armor perks that are generally considered to be the meta. We're going to start things off with Biting. Biting provides a 2% chance per rank to critically hit opponents, and goes up to 4 ranks. On a budget, you're going to go for Biting 3 with 9 direct components. There's a 14% chance of getting it, but there's also a very high chance that this perk will come with a Cautious perk. If you get Cautious with it, that will mean that you will not be able to use Auto Retaliate. So if it's something like AFK gear, this isn't a great option. If you're looking to get yourself Biting 4, you're going to need to disassemble a Noxious weapon. A level 9 Nox will provide you with 20 Noxious components, so this perk isn't actually as expensive as one might think. The perk combination to get standard Biting 4 is with 7 Noxious components, 1 Direct component, and 1 Blade part. Although this perk combination gives you a 100% chance of getting the Biting 4 perk for about 42 million coins, I would actually caution against it. This is because there are a number of combination perks you can get with Biting 4, where even if you're not lucky enough to get the combination you want, there's a very high chance of, if nothing else, getting exactly what's listed right here, Biting 4. Let's take a look at those combinations right now. As you can see, I've listed the combinations for Biting 4 Mobile, Biting 4 Undead Slayer, Biting 4 Dragon Slayer, and Biting 4 Crystal Shield 1. Along with the base chance, I've also listed the chance of receiving Biting 4, which for all of these combinations is 63% or over. The third of four armor perks we're going to look at is Impatient. Impatient gives you a 9% chance per rank for basic abilities to generate 3% extra adrenaline. It's hard to quantify exactly how much extra damage you'd get out of this because it depends what you're able to actually do with that adrenaline, but it's generally considered a best in slot perk, and I think it's a really important one. Similar to Biting, it's very easy to get combo perks with Impatient. We've got Impatient for Mobile, Impatient for Dragon Slayer, Impatient for Undead Slayer, and Impatient for Venom Blood. All the perk combinations are listed, and all of them have at least an 87% chance of receiving base Impatient 4. Which means, for example, if you were to fail the roll for Impatient for Mobile, which is a 1 in 3, you're still very likely to end up with Impatient 4, which will do the trick in a pinch. I'm also going to mention that all four of these gizmos are most common at level 113 Invention. You can lower your Invention level by standing in the entrance to God Wars Dungeon 1. The advanced variation of Impatient is Impatient 4 Devoted 4. There's a 9.5% chance of getting this with 7 Zamorak and 2 Saranoman components. 
This is considered to be the best impatient option at any boss where you're taking a lot of damage, and the reason for this is the game sees Devoted 4 and Enhanced Devoted 4 as separate perks, meaning that they do somewhat stack. They don't stack additively, which would be absolutely insane and would result in close to 55% damage reduction, but while Enhanced Devoted 4 is going off, Devoted 4 can also proc, which will result in just a super extended time where you won't be taking any damage. The perk combination for Impatient 4 Devoted 4 is 7 Zamorak components and 2 Saradaman components, with about a 9.5% chance of receiving it. The final standard gizmo we're going to talk about is Crackling and Relentless. Crackling damages your target for 50% ability damage per rank every 60 seconds, and Relentless has a 1% chance per rank to prevent adrenaline from being consumed on thresholds, ultimates, and special attacks. They're both quite strong perks, and fortunately, you can get them both together. If you're on a budget, you're gonna go for Crackling 4 Relentless 3, with 4 Vintage components and 3 Explosive components. This should cost you just under 7 million coins, and if you really want to ball out, you can go for Crackling 4 Relentless 5, which you can get with 8 Vintage components. There's only a 5% chance or a 1 in 20 of receiving this gizmo, and with average luck, it should cost you about 72 million coins. If for whatever reason you don't want the Relentless perk, Crackling can be easily combined with several other perks. Crackling for Mobile, Crackling for Dragon Slayer, and Crackling for Venom Blood in particular are very good options as they are quite inexpensive. You get all of these combinations by starting off with explosive components that you can get by disassembling a hand cannon, and then finishing them off with different extra components depending on what you're going for. I know that was a lot of information in a very short time, but congratulations, you've made it through all of the basic stuff. We've got our base set of weapon perks on our 2H, our main hand, and our offhand, and we've also perked up our plate body and plate legs. At this point, we're going to take a look at some switch perks and some niche perks. All of these are as always optional, but I'm going to talk about why they're good, where they're used, and how to get them. The first switch perk we're going to talk about is Planted Feet. It increases the duration of Sunshine and Death Swiftness by 25%, but they also no longer deal the periodic damage to your target that they previously would have. Planet Feed is actually the single highest DPS increase from an invention perk, and although it is a switch perk, meaning that it is equipped only for the one ability that it impacts, you only have to use it once per minute. And if you're not someone that really does a lot of switchscape, I would strongly recommend this as a jumping off point or a starting point for doing so. You click your planted feet, then you click your ultimate, and then you go back to whatever weapons you're on before. It's very few actions per minute, and the end result is an absolute ton of damage. If you're wondering why it gives you so much extra damage, it's because those extra seconds at the end of Sunshine and Death Swiftness will allow you to actually repeat your strongest threshold abilities and use them a second time in a single ultimate. When you're looking at what you want to make your planted feet switch, there are a lot of good options. You could put it on a main hand, a defender, an offhand, or even a sun spear. The sun spear is the cheapest option as you can swap the combat style on the sun spear between magic and ranged and just use one switch for both combat styles. But it is a two-handed weapon, so if you wanted to be able to use planted feet with something like a shield on, it's not a great option. The planted feet perk can be easily combined with Illajunkin components to get planted feet aftershock one. This will allow you to switch to your planted feet and use your ultimate ability without losing your aftershock stat. For me personally, I have Planted Feet Aftershock 1 on a Wand of the Cyware Elders for Magic and on a Shadow Glaive for Rain. The last thing worth mentioning about the Planted Feet perk is this is one of two slides in the video where I'm going to be showing a standard gizmo shell. If you try these same combinations in an ancient gizmo shell, you won't have a 100% chance of getting the perks you want. The next switch perk we're going to talk about is Flanking, and it only impacts targets that are not facing you. It'll increase the damage on backhand, impact, and binding shot by 40% per rank, and increase the damage of the threshold stuns that are forceful backhand, deep impact, and tight bindings by 15% per rank. Flanking should be put on an offhand weapon that has a different item identification to your regular offhand. This can be done with a die or by just using a different offhand. The basic combination for flanking is flanking four. It requires nine clockwork components and there's about an 80% chance of getting it. In an advanced setup, you'd combine flanking four with equilibrium one, and this is done with five clockwork and four precise components, but only has a 5% chance of receiving it. The best way to get clockwork components is to buy cannons at the entrance of the dwarven mine and disassemble them. The last thing I'm gonna mention here is for the basic flanking four gizmo, it is most common at level 53 invention. Once again, you can lower your invention level by standing outside the entrance of the God Wars dungeon. Lunging will increase the maximum damage of Combust, Dismember, and Fragmentation Shot by 20% per rank, but enemies that move will only take 1.5 times increased damage instead of the usual 2 times for Combust and Fragmentation Shot. Because of this, Lunging is primarily only used for Melee and the Dismember ability. Lunging should either be put on a Melee Offhand or the Masterwork Spear of Annihilation. This is something that isn't widely mentioned, but bleeds are not affected by the precise or equilibrium perks at all. For this reason, you don't need to go for a combination perk, and you can simply get Lunging 4 by itself with 6 Avernit components. 
The next switch perk we're going to talk about is Chroming. Chroming allows Chain and Ricochet to hit one additional target per rank. But this also works with the Greater Chain and Greater Ricochet ability. Not only will this increase the number of hits on the Greater Ricochet ability, but it will also increase the chances of you getting an Enchanted but Criminal Bolt proc. And this makes Chroming for Equilibrium 2 along with the Greater Ricochet ability the strongest basic ability in the entire game. If you're going to be camping an Eldritch Crossbow, you would put Chroming for Equilibrium 2 along with Precise 6 Aftershock 1 on it, and if you're planning on using Dual Wield, you'll instead go with an offhand switch for Chroming 4 and Equilibrium 2. The perk combination is 6 Shadow Components and 3 Time Worn Components, and there's about a 29% chance of getting it. Here's what Ruthless does. Upon defeating an enemy, you gain 0.5% damage per rank for 20 seconds. This can stack up to 5 times for a 2.5% damage increase. Ruthless can be combined with Equilibrium where multiple enemies are killed. This can be good at places like Elite Dungeons, Telos, or Slayer. This perk can also be really good on a Scythe as well as a Defender. The ideal combination for Ruthless gets you Equilibrium 4, Ruthless 3 in one gizmo. There's a 5% chance or a 1 in 20 of getting this with 8 Time Worn components. We're on to the second last slide of the video. We're going to be talking about a Bladed Dive Switch. The Bladed Dive ability requires a melee main hand and offhand to be used unless you've got Laceration Boots equipped, in which case you could also use a melee two-handed weapon. When you're meleeing, you can already Bladed Dive. But what about when you're using range and magic? It's pretty simple. If the rest of your gear setup has the Aftershock perk on it, you're going to want Aftershock 1 on the main hand with two Illajunkin components. As for the offhand, an Enhanced Excalibur is a popular choice, as it's got a powerful special effect that heals you, and for a lot of players, it's going to be in your inventory anyway, so you may as well use it for two things. The perk of choice on the Excalibur is usually the Mobile perk, which you can get on a standard Gizmo Shell with one Subtle and one Dexterous component. Last but absolutely not least, let's talk about Shield perks. If you're planning on using the Barricade ability, you're going to want Turtling 4. It increases the duration and the cooldown of Barricade, and is extremely useful. You can get it extremely inexpensively with 6 Historic Components and 3 Evasive Components. If you're planning on soaking damage while camping something like a Spirit Shield, you're going to want the Absorbative 4 perk. You'll get this 99% of the time with 8 Fungal Components. Now that we've covered all of the PVM perks, why don't we take a look at what my actual perk setup is with a sample combat style, which is Magic. As you can see, on my primary wand, I've got Precise 6 Aftershock 1, and then on my offhand, I've got Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2. On my two-handed weapon, I've got Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2, along with Precise 6 Ruthless 1. On the subject of switch perks, I've got my Planted Feet switch, which is a wand of the Cyware Elders. I've got Planted Feet Aftershock 1 on it. After that, I've got my Flanking switch, which in my case is a Barrow's Died Seismic Singularity with Flanking 4 on it. Outside of that, my Tier 90 shield has Turtling 4 on it. On the subject of armor perks, I've got Impatient 4 Mobile, as well as Enhanced Devoted 4 on my top, and on my bottoms, I've got Relentless 5 Crackling 4, as well as Biting 4 Crystal Shield 1. This isn't necessarily best in slot in all scenarios, and it's important to consider which types of PVM you do to determine which combo perks are going to be important to you. Okay, I think we've actually done it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. I know it was a lot of information to compress into about 17 minutes, but if you made it through to the end, I really do appreciate it, and I hope you learned something useful. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, the comment section down below is the place for them, and outside of that, I will see you all in the next video.